Unless you've lived under a rock for the past several years, you've most likely seen or at least heard of the Hunger Games series. Set in a dystopian future, the series pits young people against one another in a battle to the death. This deadly game genre is not new in film and other media, and in the real world it dates back to at least gladiatorial combat in ancient Rome. Our species seems to have a sort of morbid attraction to death games, and given our proclivity for increasingly violent entertainment, it's prompted some to ask the question, are we headed towards a future where these death games are the norm? Let's take a trip back to ancient Rome, the birthplace of the common phrase bread and circuses. This expression originated as a jab at the Roman citizens for caring about nothing but cheap entertainment as a distraction from the troubles of the real world. Politicians who wanted to ensure their position were only too happy to oblige, throwing lavish games and handing out free bread to the commoners to keep them satisfied. As a little side note, bread and circuses in the original Latin is panem et circensis, and you'll notice that the name of the fictional nation in the Hunger Games is panem. The phrase bread and circuses doesn't necessitate violent expositions like the ones often seen at the Colosseum, but to the Roman leadership, death games allowed them to kill two birds with one stone. The obvious benefit was keeping the citizens happy and distracted from their poor living conditions, but it also allowed them to dispose of political and military prisoners in brutal fashion. Simple battle royales were commonplace, but the Romans weren't shy of gruesome special events either. Battles with wild animals and historical reenactments were immensely popular with the masses. At least once, the entire basin of the Colosseum was filled with water in order to stage a naval battle complete with ships, aquatic animals, and hundreds of combatants. Ancient Rome was home to the greatest heights of debauchery, and it's not surprising that we haven't seen a spectacle quite the same as those held at the Colosseum in our modern society. That being said, our collective interest in the idea of death games has remained. Films like The Most Dangerous Game, Battle Royale, The Hunger Games, and the upcoming Belko Experiment are evidence that somewhere deep down, we like the idea of this ultimate test of survival. Of course, we could never have such a violent event in real life today, could we? Well, you might be surprised. As of late 2016, an eccentric Russian millionaire has been preparing to launch his own televised, unscripted survival game, and he looks the part. All he's missing is a scar and an exotic pet, and he'd be the perfect Bond villain. The show, dubbed Game 2 Winter, will be the first 24-7 live broadcast of this sort in history. It's scheduled to last for nine months, through the sweltering summer and brutal Siberian winter. Thirty competitors from around the world will be dropped on a remote Siberian island of about nine square kilometers, with nothing but a knife and 100 kilograms of supplies. The only goal is to survive until the end of the nine months. At surface level, it just seems like a more intense version of the American show Survivor. Until you look at the rules or lack thereof, because there really aren't any restrictions. The official rules originally stated, everything is allowed. Fighting, alcohol, murder, rape, smoking, anything. After being pressed on the issue of whether the organizers would step in if the cameras were to catch a violent crime happening, the millionaire responded, no, we won't. We are not scared of negative reaction if that happens either. However, no matter how intense this man wants his show to be, he's made it clear that participants will still be subject to Russian criminal law, if they commit a crime, and it's captured by any of the 2,000 cameras in the arena, they will be arrested. Even with that safeguard in place, the fact of the matter is that the game itself is incredibly dangerous even without human violence. Siberia is home to deadly predators, including gray wolves and grizzly bears, and the temperature can range from a sweltering 35 degrees Celsius in the summer to below minus 40 in the winter. Contestants will have to forage and hunt for their own food, and craft a shelter to survive the elements. Each contestant will be given a panic button to press in case of emergency, which is linked to a GPS satellite so a rescue helicopter can airlift them to safety. Of course, if you press the button, you lose the game, and miss out on the chance of winning the $1.3 million prize. Game 2 Winter is slated to run from July of 2017 to April of 2018, and there has reportedly been interest from mainstream television networks to air the show in five countries and six languages. Whether it will be as violent and brutal as some predict is yet to be seen, if Game 2 Winter is a success, it would open the door for similar projects, and possibly be the catalyst for more gruesome spectacles in the future. That leads us back to the question, how violent can it get? Should we expect to see a real-life Hunger Games in the future? One scientific journal seems to think so. Tourism expert Daniel William Mackenzie Wright of the University of Central Lancashire suspects that within the next 200 years, we'll see a dramatic shift towards hunting humans as a form of sport and entertainment. The paper examines current socio-political trends, environmental degradation and depletion of natural resources, economic realities regarding the division between the very poor and the social elite, the evolution of theme parks, and the current depictions of deadly games in film, television, and other media. 
The author draws the rather shocking conclusion that by the year 2200, death games will make up at least a portion of the tourism and entertainment industry, with the biggest drivers being a desensitization to violent death thanks to the media, and the economic divide, with the ultra-wealthy conducting what would equate to human fox hunts. If we as a species get to a point where we have accepted death as a form of entertainment, that would give world governments a way to alleviate prison overpopulation, quell starvation in impoverished parts of the world, and keep their citizens in check with the looming possibility of their being selected to participate in one of these deadly games. Of course, to many, becoming numb to human death and suffering would mean losing the very essence of being human. If we kill our own kind for sport or pleasure, what separates us from animals? Is it worth losing our sense of compassion to solve some difficult problems? Only time will tell, but maybe we should brush up on our archery just in case. If you'd like to learn more about the history and future of Deadly Games, check out the links in the description. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, follow Second Thought on your favorite social media, and leave a comment down below with what you think of the idea of a real-life Hunger Games. You can watch my previous video by clicking here, or watch them all by clicking here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.